you know, a question I ask all over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. It's what the rich teach their kids about money, the poor and middle class do not. And today in the world, America especially, is this gap between the rich and everybody else. And I know the game of the rich. You know, my, my rich dad taught me, you know it because you're the banker. You know the banker friends, they're not working for money. They have money working for them. Yep. Right. Very big difference in mentality here. I see you giving this knowledge out and yeah. do, do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Rob? Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. Well, I wasn't poor by most people's standards, but I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean, because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. Poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. And middle class is taught in families. And so the people right now who are sitting at home <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or unhappy, they may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing. It was probably taught to you. The poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. Right, it's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. Again, I'm not really religious. I flunked out of Sunday school also. But when they say I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. My PhD daddy says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. And your rich dad used to say what, instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take, or why should I do that? He says that a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, so when you say, I can't afford it, the mind shuts down and you become what you say. Rugby is a team sport, but so is soccer. The rules are different. And other people are golfers. They play by themselves. And so everybody's different. So my game financially is business, number one. Second is real estate. So what I say to young people is you, you find your game. I've had f financial crashes, I've had people stab me in the back, but they're all good because I grow from it. That's spirituality. Right. You know, people who are afraid of making mistakes, they don't ever grow because spirituality is there's good and there's bad, there's right and there's wrong, there's up and there's down. Most people only want to be right, they only want to be positive. Well, you can't have that, that's not reality. Right, my poor dad said, go talk to your best friend's father, Mike's father. I said, why is that? He says, because Mike's father's an entrepreneur. And you know, I'm nine years old, so what's an entrepreneur? And he said, well, I'm an employee. They're two different people, right. mindset-wise. Right. Well, it came from a, a lesson before Rich Dad, well, I was in Sunday school. My Sunday school teacher was a young, pretty woman, you know, and she said, I'm like nine. And she goes, why were the three wise men wise? You know, I go, because they were rich. You know, they, gave, they, gave, they gave the swaddling Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So they had to be rich guys, I said. And she goes, no, no, that's not it. I said, well, well, they had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, that's not it. I said, why were they wise? I went, I don't know. She says, what made them wise was they always sought the best teacher. And she says, if you're going to be a successful in your life, you've got to find the best teachers. And so with that, when my poor dad said, go seek out your rich dad, I was just following her advice. So I've had a habit ever since then, or a policy, if I find out there's a great teacher, and a great teacher is somebody who comes from the inside, not the outside. You know, when I was in flight school, I swear to God, my pilot, my instructors could fly because I flew with them. But in school, you don't know if your instructor is for real or not. I said, I want you to teach me about money. So it was, so why should I teach you? 
you go to school, your dad's going to, dad, my poor dad's not going to teach you. He goes, he says, I said, oh, finally, he acquiesced. He said, okay. He says, but if I teach you, you work for me for free. So how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants, and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice, basically. But I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day, I got upset. I said, well, when are you going to teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one green house. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four green houses, one red hotel. Mm-hmm. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. Well, is that all there is? He goes, that's it. You know, assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money from your pocket. They count anything of value as an asset. They count your car as an asset, your house as an asset. When it's really taking money from your pocket, your retirement plan, guess what? It's a liability. It's taking money from your pocket every month. And whose pocket does it go to? Wall Street or City of London. And, and, and that's why, as you and I know, these funds, you know, they sit there, they go, assets under management. That's what they're paid on. Well, the reason the rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income. Earned, portfolio, passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income because I'm working for it. If I buy a, if I buy, let's say, Apple for ten dollars and I send it for twenty, that's uh, portfolio income, capital gains. Yeah. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never taxed. So it's not. And so all these guys are screaming right now in America tax the rich, I said, good luck. Because most of the guys complaining, they don't know the three kinds of income. And the rich don't have jobs anyway. They have assets. And so the average schmo out there, a poor guy, they don't learn this. So that's why in fake, as you were talking about it, there's a newspaper article about Jared Kushner. Yeah. And he explains how the Trumps and the Kushners don't pay taxes and make millions of dollars. And the reporter couldn't understand him because they're not, our schools will never teach you that three types of income. And they judged him and say they're wrong and it's cheating. And we see that over and over again, Amazon not paying taxes. What do you say to people when they come up to you and say, Robert, it's not fair. It's not fair they're not paying taxes. Well, there's always three sides to a coin, you know, heads, tails, and the edge. You know, so which side of the coin are you on? From my side, it's fair. But this is the difference. Everybody can do the same thing I do because the tax laws are for everybody. You know, we don't say, well, the tax laws are only for the rich. No, the tax laws are for everybody to use if you have the right financial education. And the reason I'm an advocate of financial education, without that education, you have to pay taxes. You see, very few people will buy what I do, make a million dollars and pay zero tax. That takes... And my rich dad taught me that playing Monopoly. That's how it started. You know, four green houses, one red hotel. Or the McDonald's formula. I write about it there. McDonald's, Ray Kroc. Yeah. McDonald's is in the real estate business. So they sell hamburgers, but they buy real estate, so they pay no taxes. You know, this guy Bezos, well, he's $16 billion. How much tax did they pay on that $16 billion? You know, the question I ask, all over the world, what does school teach you about money? And the answer is nothing. But the way to keep the poor and middle class working hard is never teach them what the rich know. It's what the rich teach their kids about money, the poor and middle class do not.